Thanks for joining me. Today we're going to be doing a project using an old book. Um, it's a project for anybody, adults, kids. It's not a complicated thing. It's something anybody can do. It's just, if you have kids doing it, just remind them that we don't normally rip up books and use <laughs> glue the pages to things. Um, and what better project for March? March is reading month, so a book-related project for the kids would be great. What you'll need is some fairly good quality paper. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be top-notch, doesn't have to be watercolor paper, but if you've got some old books that have a little bit thicker paper, like, it's not super thin, like, you know, the pocket romances sometimes have really thin vellum-like paper. You don't want that. You want something that's thick enough to paint on without it just coming to pieces. Um, you also don't want paper that has a waxy, glossy coating, like magazine paper, textbook paper, that will not work very well for this, so don't use that. Just usually any old hardcover book, most of the old books will have good enough quality paper for this. Um, you will need glue. I just use Elmer's glue. This is the clear Elmer's glue, but the white glue will work just fine too. You will need an old brush. Um, disposable brush is great. Um, I've got a one and a half inch chip brush here that I used. You can wash the glue out of it, but I would recommend just using one you can throw away at the end. You'll need a canvas or something to glue the paper to. I just got a 16 by 20 inch stretched canvas here. Um, watercolors. I used the liquid watercolors for this, but any kind of watercolors will work. You only need two brushes today. A fine detail brush, and then a round watercolor camel hair brush. An optional, a toothbrush you can use, because we splatter some color around on the canvas, but you can use a regular brush for that too. You don't have to have the toothbrush. Um, Another thing you need, well you don't need, you, it's optional. If you want to make your paper look aged and yellowed, if it isn't already, you know, if it's a book that's not already aged and yellowed, um, some cold coffee. Just, you know, coffee from the pot from this morning, or if you're a mom like me, there's cold coffee sitting somewhere around the house. <laughs> so we just use that and rub it on the paper and let it dry, and it's great for making it look aged and yellowed. Um, I think that's all we need today. So let's get started. I'll show you how to get your papers glued onto your canvas. I hope you enjoy the project today. So I've got my canvas here. I've got a 16 by 20 inch. And I've got some ripped out sheets of paper from my book. Now if you don't want, see I've got jagged edges here. I just ripped it out. If you don't want the jagged edges, if you want nice clean lines, you can use scissors to cut it out, but I just like the look of the ripped edges. All I'm going to do is, got my glue here. You can use the white Elmer's glue. You could really use whatever glue you want. I just like the Elmer's glue because it's not very expensive and the clear is really easy to use. So I'm going to do this up here where you can see me. <laughs> As I'm just going to put some glue all on the back of this page here. Then I'm going to use the old brush and I'm going to spread it all the way out to the edges. You want to make sure it gets all the way to the edges of the paper because if you've got parts that aren't covered in glue, then I'm just going to put it right here. If you've got parts that aren't covered in glue all the way, 
you'll end up with little tabs sticking up on your canvas and we don't want that we want to make sure it's all smooth all glued to the canvas you can see I can see it lifting right there didn't get glue right there you want to make sure that you get glue all the way out to the edges of the paper I'm just going to press that down now don't worry about lining it up with the edges it looks better to me anyway if you kind of put them around haphazardly and then after it's dried or as it's drying you then cut away the excess because I, I prefer the disorderly look. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to keep doing this. And if you don't want to do this right on top of your canvas, you can do this, the gluing off to the side. Once it gets more filled with the pages, we will want to move off of the canvas for doing this because we don't want to cover the... the front side of the paper with glue because we want it to we want the watercolors to work well on it and if it's all covered in glue it kind of seals it up all right I'm going to put this one over to the side like this I'm just making sure to press it down all along the edges see I'm just going different and make I like to do pages from all throughout the book so that they're not all in the same order, you know, page 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. I like to have, you know, page 166, page 3, page 77, you know. Once you've got all of your pages glued to your canvas, you can take a pair of scissors and just start trimming along the edge of the canvas. Now you can wait for the paper to be dry to do this or you can do it while it's still wet. I sometimes like to do it while it's still wet just so I can kind of push down the edges of the paper onto the canvas. got our edges all cut off on our canvas. We're ready to let that dry. We're going to put the coffee on our canvas now just to age it, yellow it, make it look make it look like old paper. Now I've just got some cold coffee here from earlier and I've got the brush that I used to glue to brush glue on the paper. You can get a different brush, you can, heck, you can use your hands to just dip in the coffee and spatter it on. It really doesn't matter. But I washed this out and washed the glue out of it, so it's just, it's fine now. Um, I'm just going to dip into the coffee and spatter it around. Now if you want to just brush it in, you can do that, but it does give it a unique look if you spatter it and just let some of those spattered areas sit because those spots will be a little bit darker. It'll add a little bit of variation in the yellowing and it'll just look really neat. I like the way it looks. But I do like to make sure we've got coffee pretty much all over. I'm not gonna lie, your canvas is gonna smell like coffee <laughs> for a little bit. But that's all right. Who doesn't like the smell of coffee? Well, I'm sure some people don't, but I sure do.
All right. Now, I can just take this and just add some spatters around. And you're going to want to make sure to leave this in an area where you can leave it to lay flat to dry. Because obviously if you pick it up and try and lay it upright to dry, it's going to leave, it's all going to run down and leave runs in it and it's not going to leave cool spatters in it. Um, you can let this dry and do this step as many times as you want until you get the desired yellowing. I have done this project a few times before and on one of them I think I did the coffee step like five times and what I was doing is I did the whole canvas the first time with the coffee and then the second time third time fourth time I just focused more on the center and then I did my little painting in the center so you can do this step as many times as you want or you can just do it once and call it good it whatever you think looks good to you and you don't even you don't have to do this step either this is an optional step if you don't want your paper to look all yellowed you don't have to do that let's get started on our dandelions I've got just two colors here I use the liquid watercolors for this one um, just got black and a light bright blue and I'm just going to put just a faint little haze where I want my dandelion puffs to be so I'm just gonna get a bit of water and put some water in my tray here because we don't want we don't want this to be a really saturated color. We want this very faint, very watered down. Just a touch of the black and a touch of the blue. A little bit more maybe. And I want a lot of water in this, really watered down. I don't really want a black black. Let's see, our little dandelion puffs are going to be in this corner and the, the little seeds are going to be floating off here, so... A little more blue, baby. A lot more water. We want it to be real faint. this on an upright easel like I do here. Be really careful about that. The colors running. This is going to be a little bit different than working with regular watercolor paper. If you're used to using regular paper, this is going to be a little bit different because it doesn't absorb it quite as well. I'm going to darken this one up just a little bit more, touch more blue in there. I just want this one to stand out a little bit more from the others. You want to put a little touch more blue and the other ones too. Okay, so that's just to show where our little dandelion puffs are going to be. If you wanted more, you can you can do more. If you wanted them up higher a little bit, that's fine too. Now I'm going to move to a finer brush, and I'm going to. I'm not going to need as much water this time because I'm just, I want black, but I want, I want a pretty saturated black. Be 
because I'm going to be doing some fine line work with putting the dandelion stems in and the little seed puffs. All right, we'll do this one in the back first. You can bring that right up, that stem right up to the middle because all the seeds are going to radiate from that center. And it's okay if they overlap, that's fine. That guy's still pretty wet there, so we're going to work on him last. Let's do this one back here first. Now if this is, if, if it's really wet and it's not making nice clean lines for you, you can let that dry for a few minutes and then come back to it. And all I'm doing, I'm putting little stalks out. I'm just putting a little like a really wide U at the top, and then I'm just putting little little fluffs at the end. And we're just going to fill up all of these all of these puff balls here. With the little seeds. You can make some of these short, short little stalks, and some of them go all the way out to the edge. Just kind of like to intersperse some little short ones. In between the long ones. Now we can start putting our little flyaway seeds. For those, it's just a little stalk. I mean, it's basically just this. You can put a little bit of a heavier end on it. You just kind of have them floating away. And again, this is one, just put them out there randomly. Try not to keep them too patterned, you know, just the more free it is, the more natural it's going to look. You can even have, you know, some smaller up here, like they're off in the distance, like they've already blown away quite a ways. A little one off in the distance there. I 
I've added a little bit of viridian green and yellow ochre to my colors here. And I've got the same brush that I used at the beginning to put the, the background color in for my um, dandelions. Dandelions, so like I said dandelions. <laughs> um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to add some splashes of color in here. We're not going to cover the whole canvas. I mean, we, we, we kind of want to have some of this you know, yellowed paper, this aged look, and we don't want to cover the whole thing with color. But we do want to add a little splash here and there, and we will put some spatters of color as well, just for fun. But I'm going to dip into a little bit of this green. I'm going to mix it over here. I'm going to put a little more blue. You can't see what I'm doing here. I like that color. I'm going to put some excess water in here. And then we can just kind of add some splashes of color around our dandelions. Really water it down if you want to around the edges. We will go through and put some of that yellow ochre in too. We're just putting some splashes of color in. All right, now I've got some yellow ochre. It's just a straight yellow ochre. You can put a little touch of that green in there if you want to. Sometimes I like to just water down my brush and spread out the colors a bit. Sometimes it just helps blend. Just dipping in some random colors and some water and just letting it do its thing. And if you see an area that you think needs a another splash of blue or green, brighten up. Now we've got some color in there, and I can see as this is drying, you can't see the stems very well on my dandelion. So I'm going to go through. All right, and now what I like to do, just to add a little splash of color everywhere without completely covering the canvas with, with solid color is I'll put a little bit, I'm going to add an extra a bit of the um, burnt sienna, a bit of ultramarine, maybe even just a touch of crimson, and a touch of hooker's green. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, an old toothbrush. I'm going to use a little bit of water. I'm going to put a tap 
just a, or a, um, a couple drops of water in each of the tubs of color. I'm going to start a little bit in this yellow ochre. I'm just going to do some little splatters on the canvas. And I'm going to wash that out. I'm not going to I'm not going to do a lot. I'm not going to kill it with yellow. I'm going to go into a little bit of that burnt sienna now. Do the same thing. A few splashes of that. Again, be mindful of <laughs> what's behind your canvas. Just to make sure you're not spraying watercolors all over everything else behind it. I'm going to go into that red, the crimson, just a bit of that. And then the hooker's green. You can mix these colors too if you want. If you wanted to mix the hooker's green with some bright blue over here. Spray some of that color around. Another thing you can do is if you don't want a fine spray like that, you can lay the canvas down and you can just use a, a, a bigger brush and drip the color onto it instead of spraying it and you can get bigger drips. won't be quite such a fine spray. I just think it gives it kind of a fun look. Adds a little extra color to it. I just thought that was a fun little activity to do with an old book that's not getting used or read anymore. It was just, I hope you liked doing this painting with me. And if you did, stick around because I will probably do a few more of these because I really enjoy doing these. I think they're fun. So thanks for joining me and I hope to see you next time. Before you go, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my new classes.